Hey guys, in this video we'll be having a sneak peek on how the Apple eGPU developer kit consisting of the Sonic Breakaway Box and AMD Radeon RX 580 is currently performing on the High Sierra Beta. Okay, so first when you plug in the external GPU enclosure, you're prompted to log out and back in again to utilize it. Final Cut Pro currently crashes on launch. To get around this however, you'll need to disable the internal GPU. You can do this by modifying files in the system folders. Note, you'll have to disable SIP to do this. Simply reboot your Mac in safe mode, type in a couple of commands and restart it back up. John Watso from eGPU.io has a nice script you can use to automatically mod the required files. You just need to first edit it with the internal GPU type of yours. This varies from Mac to Mac. Run the script and restart your Mac for the changes to come into effect. After restarting, your MacBook display will flicker a lot and become a burden to use. So only use this step if you're planning on using an external display. This step should be unnecessary soon, but may still be required for less mainstream applications as it looks like supporting the enclosure might require app-specific updates. I wanted to see if using the eGPU would speed up rendering projects utilizing local network media. As you can see, it didn't. The Bruce X 5K test is a project used in Final Cut Circles to measure the rendering performance of a computer uniformly. Using the same internal GPU in Sierra, my MacBook usually takes one minute and a half to render out this project. The external GPU in High Sierra Beta took one minute and six seconds. While this is 30% faster, it's... Yeah, it's not as good as I hoped it'd be. This is macOS Sierra, and I've set it so if the frame drops, it will stop playback and warn. Now I'm gonna be playing 4K footage shot on my Panasonic G85 camera with some text overlays. Straight away you see, frames drop as soon as it tries to display the overlays. Transcoding the same 4K video file took 6 seconds using the internal GPU setup, whereas for some reason it took 14 seconds using the eGPU. This took 1 minute and 26 seconds using the internal GPU, but only 59 seconds using the external GPU. Another 30% improvement. Using OpenGL on the iOS simulator was much faster. Unfortunately, I couldn't figure out how to get the eGPU working on Windows. While the Radeon card was successfully listed in the device manager, nothing would come out of the HDMI output. I tried updating the drivers, but unfortunately the Radeon installation utility couldn't detect the hardware. I went ahead and tested Assassin's Creed, hoping that maybe the game developers might better detect and utilize the eGPU, perhaps for physics co-processing or an off-screen renderer. However, the game's frame rates were still too poor to be playable. Unless you plug in the USB cable directly in the port, you might see a few sparks and overload the system. The eGPU enclosure added an extra 20 decibels to my serene work environment, and given the shortness of the provided cable, the noise is unavoidable. So just as a comparison, this is how, this is how loud I'm talking at the moment. So I think it sounds something like... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it just sounds like someone breathing heavily next to you. Yeah, I thought you might find that useful. 
At the moment, expect to get a 30% performance bump on rendering with the eGPU kit. I'm hoping that this performance bump is only the start, and when High Sierra is released, the eGPU will be performing at least three times faster than the internal GPU. But for me personally, the biggest deal breaker, other than its lack of support for Windows games, and the one thing I wasn't expecting was the noise. While this is a quiet box in the world of eGPUs, it's still noisy, very noisy. I now think it's best to just go for a Hackintosh solution or wait for the eagerly desired new Mac Pro. What do you guys think?